It's so funny. The concept of male feminism is hilarious to me because it's never actual male feminist. I'll tell you what male feminist is. It's a guy who marries a chick and they have a baby and he like, doesn't sleep because the baby cries and he doesn't shoot himself in the head. That's a male feminist. That's actual sacrifice. It's not these, these, these soy sipping fucking losers. They're like, I'm an ally to women. I'm marching all day. It's like, you're just trying to have a threesome because you know they have bad dads. <laughs> There's no rooster in that head house and now you're a, a hungry fox. You're a predator. Welcome to Electric Liberty Land here on the Lions of Liberty podcast. Your weekly shot of culture, comedy, and liberty with your host, Brian McWilliams. All right, everybody, welcome to Electric Liberty Land, episode number 55. And you might recognize the voice you heard at the top of that show, that cold open. That is a man that I have been trying to get to come on this show for a while, and I can happily proclaim that he has finally arrived, the one and only Owen Benjamin. How's it going, Owen? It's going good, man. Thanks for having me. I'm yeah. uh, I'm good buddies with Dave Smith, and he uh, he was really recommending you guys a lot. So it's good to be here. That's always good to hear. We're huge fans of Dave, as you well know. And uh, you know, it's like <laughs> I wish I wish you were here under slightly better better circumstances than you are, because uh, what what spurred this a bit, and we've been talking before this anyway, uh, gently over over Twitter, gently massaging and prodding each other, but. Um, you know, there was a little bit of discussion going on in the prior Electric Liberty Land that aired, wherein uh, a buddy of mine named Jake Weissman came on, and I will, uh, you know, it might just be easiest, I'll I'll play a quick clip of what Jake said, so I don't want to misrepresent the conversation, and then we'll come back in and discuss. Yeah, I mean, it's it, well, it's, it comes down a little bit to what's legally uh, coming down on free speech and what's culturally coming down on it. And I can't say that I support the, the cultural, uh, you know, we're talking about morality and judgment. Like, like we were saying earlier, culturally saying you can or cannot say these things. You know, it's, it's not, you, you still can say them, but I feel that as a culture, we've gone a little bit too far down that road. And, um, you know, the outrage machine, as we, as you discussed in the first episode of corporate with this tweet. But, but I agree with you, but what I would say, is then if you don't care, like, let's say not you, but like second person, you, if you're like, fuck the outrage machine, then make your living off of not being afraid of saying that because there are enough people. Yeah, like Owen Benjamin, uh, if you're familiar with him at all, a uh, comedian, he basically lost all his college speaking gigs because he had made some, basically he, he was arguing that uh, he said it was child abuse to raise a, a ch- young child as, uh, you know, transgender and have the hormone therapy before they're even, you know, eight years old. So whether or not you agree with that or not, he had lost a lot of his sponsorships. He lost his agent. So he's now made a career essentially as that counter voice and screw it all. And yeah, so he, so it. basically he said something, um, which I personally don't agree with and I, I don't like him, but, but he said something and then now he's making his living off. Look how oppressed I am. So he's using that market. And so he said something which he knew people would agree with he's not that dumb it's like it's a pretty fucked up thing to say at least in today's climate whether or not you like you know saying that is going to upset some people right so then now his market is okay i'm basically a libertarian so i I don't have sympathy for these people that are saying stuff that is fucked up even though i get why in history some people will be revealed as correct um i don't think owen will but i do understand what you're saying but but then he it's his job to go figure out how to make money anyway and there are enough people in there's so many fucking millions of people if you're smart enough and you use the free market you can figure that out all right, so you could hear what what Jake said there. Uh, I would I would say the way I the way I expressed it to uh, to Owen, I think what we were tweeting about a little bit was he he did uh, I guess take umbrage with uh, with what Owen had said in regards to uh, to transgenders and how they're tra- how they're treated, especially in regards to hormone therapy. But he did it in a uh, a polite way, I suppose. So Owen, I mean, what was your take? I know that you didn't appreciate it. Yeah, I just think like that, those are it's just that issue. It's one thing if someone doesn't like me, but if someone uh, he used to follow me on Twitter and then he like blocked me after all this trans kid stuff. And I really don't even care that much. I just like I couldn't pick him out of a lineup of three people. I just um, I have a pretty low tolerance for for weirdos and like people that are like abusive of children. And whenever I hear I don't care how polite it is. 
it's like a polite rape to me. It's like, I, I don't care. Like if someone's nice, I just am like, if you think that you can take away a child's uh, ability to go through puberty because of a phase they had at three, uh, and then you, you know, they become sterile. The odds of them killing themselves are 40%, which is higher than, um, uh, Auschwitz. Yeah. So it's not exactly a uh, societal and it's, uh, it's, it's pretty disturbing. And I think that people that turn, I saw so many of these blue check mark, um, you know, quote unquote comedians just go with something they know is nonsense. And I think that we're seeing a lot of that in comedy right now where people are in private within an hour of talking to someone at a bar with no one listening and no one on Twitter. They're all like, man, I- I'm so like, you're so right about stuff. Like, it's really brave what you're doing. I have so much respect. Like, we all really think that way. And then you see them on Twitter and you see them on TV and you're like, you're a bunch of liars, man. Yeah. And like comedy is truth to power. And it's like, I got reamed out. I was getting annihilated by people. So it was a real like, and I came out on the other side better for it. And I think that like when you actually do your job as a comedian and, and kind of call out bullshit, people really give you a lot of respect for it. And I didn't see that coming, but it's a, it's a welcome surprise. I just think that dude is a, is a bit of a pussy for not saying that to me. And, uh, well, I mean, I just, I, in his defense, I'll say it's because it was something where I, you know, I had brought you up. I had, I had uh, raised the incarnation of Owen Benjamin. And, uh, so the, blame me on that. And, and yes, if you're wondering when I uttered your name, uh, one of the water stains on the wall did resemble your face. So that was, uh, encouraging and, and illuminating, but you know, I brought you up as an example of exactly that, how, the, how these, you know, there's this, there's this third rail you're not allowed to touch and there's these taboo topics and what you had said. I will, and we're going to talk a little bit more of this for our, our special uh, patrons at the, uh, you know, a special segment we'll do for the the Pride members. But what we, what you were saying resonates with me completely because it's like people see this topic and then this feeding frenzy starts where they go, well, you can't say anything wrong about transgenders. You can't even question the doctrine that, yes, you know, if a child says they think they're a woman or they think they're a boy, uh, then they automatically should be believed. And I had gotten shit from, you know, just on Facebook uh, cause I don't have the following that you have, or at least not, not uh, until I started doing my own podcast, but I had just posted on Facebook a story and it was a real life story of a guy who went through this as a child. He was raised transgender by his mother. He thought he was transgender. He had the surgery, all this stuff. And he goes, you know what? I regret it. And I wish somebody had been there along the did, way. To did say, he, did hey, he kill he himself? Did, no. Did, did he, did he shoot himself in the head? Fortunately not. But like you said, that's a lot of them do. Outcome. Yeah. It's yeah. A- no, the suicide rate's 40%. And it's like these weirdos, like uh, your buddy there, it's like, I, I, you can be as polite as you want, but everybody alive knows that it's child abuse. I, there's no one, a, a three-year-old, a three-year-old boy quote, di, uh, doing quote unquote, displaying quote unquote, uh, uh, female attributes. What does that even mean? That's the ultimate sexism. I played piano and knitted cloth. Like would I would I have been a uh, I wouldn't have been able to get balls. Right. Like it, it's it's eugenics. It's 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 disturbing to a degree where it's almost like that. That's the same guy that back in the day, if someone was like, I think slavery's bad, he would have been like, I really don't like that guy in the most polite way he could have been. Because right. this is an evil. It's an evil and it's bad. And and this leftism is just so disgusting. This um. Uh, uh, demasculization of, of men in this like weird genderless yet overly gendered world is, is dystopian. Well, and it's like, and, and he's no comedian. He's no comedian to me because a comedian wouldn't allow that to happen to a child because that's, there's no, there's no truth in that. Well, it's one of those things that comes down. I think one of the fundamental, like he's, you know, he was talking about, he had a gay sister or has a gay sister. And I'd say, I think he's lumping in transgender issues. What does that have anything to do with anything? Well, like, that's insanity. He's, like, he's gay, like, creating all of them together. So he's like, well, he's one an idiot. Thing, I got to stand up for all of them if I'm standing up for one of them, even though I, I agree. I don't think it makes sense. And I think that if people knew more, like the way that you were, uh, pilloried and, and just, and just ripped asunder by all these people in, you know, in, com- in comedy, by your agent, by the media, for statements that you're making, which really are based in a lot of sound worry and, and you know, worry about the child. It's not like you're just saying, fuck transgenders. You know, that's not what you're saying. You're Dude, saying, hey, everyone knows what it is. Everyone gets it. It's like, I even have a, a YouTube uh, bit called uh, Trans People Ruined Everything. And the whole bit is how it, the LGBT starts with, I do, it's a funny way of doing it, but it starts with the L's. And they're really good dinner guests and everyone likes the L's, but they're getting some flack for being L's, you know, but they get Subarus and they think what they should stick together. And then they invite the, the, uh, the, the G's 
And the G's are really cool too. You know, they're just like the L's, except they might have a Coke problem. They're really into real estate. And then the, and then the B's come in and the B's, you know, you don't know if you can go camping with them because you're like, you guys will bang anyone. They're like anyone. And then the T's come in. And everyone's like, so what? So you like to dress up as a woman? It's like, no, I am a woman. And now here comes Q, A, I, we're going to burn this motherfucker down. <laughs> And the, the joke is obvious that the only one of that uh, of that alliance that's crazy are the T's because they're the only ones that require the entire world to be on board their view of themselves that isn't set in biology. I think trans people should have all the rights I have. I don't. Uh, my piano teacher as a child, my whole life was trans and still friends. But like you can like a, a gay man is a man who is attracted to a man. Which is all real. That doesn't make any. That doesn't force people to change their view of reality itself. Right. If you just say you identify as another gender, that doesn't mean you are that. And if you go down that that nonsense rabbit hole, you get to abusive children. And it's like your friend can sound as polite as he wants. He is that train of thought gets kids sterilized. And then they shoot themselves in the head. Yeah, I, and it's I don't like I don't give a fuck, fuck about these progressive, yeah. this pro- these progressive ideals are total horseshit. And then acting like socialism is like like woke or like cool, like CNN. You know, uh, Martin Luther King Jr. was socialist before it was cool. Oh, you mean when a quarter million unarmed civilians of people's own governments were uh, massacred? Yeah, it's like they're playing with fire, and it's getting to the point where. Um, it doesn't allow for for people to have in rights, you know, and it's like they're playing with this big hypocrisy where it's like Twitter is now it's fairly obvious that they're shadow banning. Oh, yeah. That's, banning that's service. right. Obvious. Project but, Veritas but, exposed that shit just recently. They're, they're open about it now. It's just like I they're going just... to squash your your tweets down so nobody sees them. And uh, and even and, and that's it beyond the regular ban that you like. I think you're right now is your is your Twitter account still banned? You're still using. The, I just got it? back, but I was banned. I was also banned for uh, not acknowledging that Sean uh, Sean King is in fact a, a black man. <laughs> I, I, I'm not gonna say these things are real. It's like they're not real. He's not black, and he can't act like this black guy. Sorry, like you can't. Your feelings don't dictate my reality. Right. And I was banned off uh, Twitter for that. I did a funny joke about that guy, and it's like it's getting serious. And a lot of these, these LA guys, you know, I, I see that guy, your buddy there with uh, his, his, uh, his uh, profile picture. He's holding a knife. I dude, I've never even met the guy, but to see him say this stuff about kids and he's like holding a knife. It's like, dude, I got buddies that'll just rip your, your face off your body. If you come near children, yeah. it's like people are, are not fucking around with this shit. Well, people it's like, I, I, I know, I know ex Marines. Dude, I know ex-Marines that literally, literally uh, uh, need purpose in their life, and they may as well just hunt pedophiles. So I literally think people should really mellow out on this whole child abuse shit because there's people that are not repped by UTA. Like, they want to kill you. No, because, I hear like, you, man. And it's, well, it's, yeah. it's, a, it's one of those things where people can't wrap their brains, around, especially people that are so progressive on the left. Like, they, don't, they probably don't know half the stats that you're talking about. I can guarantee you that. And also they just can't wrap their heads around the fact that, you know, while I, it's like their, their hearts are always in the right place, but their minds aren't like, there's so they're, much their heart dissonance. Aren't, they're they're not, like, man. I'm not going to go with that anymore. No, I think, I, dude, I hear you. I hear you. But it's like, it, it's one of those things where, and I said this, uh, in regards to, there was a kind of conversation on our Facebook forum, but there was a lot of cognitive dissonance with what Jake was saying, but without the cognitive, it's just, it just dissonant. Cause it's like, you're not, you're not realizing what you're saying makes sense to you on one level, but in the broader context of society and the and ramifications of these decisions, like you're saying, changing a child's gender, er, uh, you know, you can't change that back. Once it's done at that age, you can never go back. And and the mental problems and all that. And it's like Jake is clearly a smart guy. He does comedy. He's clearly smart. He's witty. He can think. My dad is a professor of rhetoric, and he did his PhD in Upton Sinclair and one uh, on Upton Sinclair's The Jungle and one. Uh, uh, human nature fact that I think Upton Sinclair said is uh, I, I'm I'm butchering this quote, but something like people won't people won't go against so that the next family gathering. <laughs> no, I argue with them all the time. That's why I did that video. Why I hate the left because I differentiated between liberals and the left. We're we're uh, that's why I don't uh, go down those rabbit holes or those uh, paths of like libtard and all that shit yeah. because it's like they're a. Well, let me finish the Upton Square quote. Yeah, the Upton yeah, Square 
is uh, is uh, something along the lines of people won't vote against or question like that which pays them. Oh, and yeah. so and so he's in a world where he is motivated by money and status. So it's like because of his Comedy Central show and because of like being cool in L.A., he can't allow himself to think about reality and the victims, these children that are just getting absolutely annihilated by this quote unquote progressive horseshit. And it's like I highly recommend he read the Gulag Archipelago if he wants to know where this can go. And it's not that far off. Like the things people are proposing is just it, it, like gender doesn't exist. Right. Race is a feeling. <laughs> Like these things are insane. But not only gender, but also sex. And I like, you know, there's like 32, like Jordan Peterson talks about this all the time. There's like 32 different genders and things you can identify as. And, and coming back to the, the whole, just the concept of a kid thinking that they, they, they know they're a girl at the age of six or whatever it is. It's like, at you that can't age, drive, you can't vote, you can, can't drink. Well, you still think yeah. you can grow up to be fucking Batman. And you're telling me this child thinks he could be Batman and also is confident that they can get a sex change and they're confident that they are a woman or a man. Everyone knows it's way. not true. That's why I don't buy this like road to uh, hell is paved with good intentions bullshit. It's like, I, I would love to just ask this guy, this Jake guy, be like, do you think that's real? Like, do you like I have a son? I'm guessing he does not have a son. If he did, he would fucking end this shit immediately. It's like if you have a son, the one thing you'll notice is they want to make their dad happy. My son is one and a half. He's already playing the piano. He like he knows what makes me laugh. He like is always looking to, to please me because I'm one of the only people he knows exists and I'm his father. It's so disturbingly sad to me that this little kid, this this Jesse Thorne's son, this this big shot uh, in uh, NPR that I am not scared of. I'm not scared to talk shit about any of these progressive fucking lieutenants. I don't care. Dude, I live in the mountains, man. I got 10 chickens that give me eggs every day and I got a fucking AR-15. <laughs> it's like everyone can chill out. It's like this kid is trying to impress his dad and his dad is probably one of these guys that's always talking about how everyone trans is a fucking hero. And it's like and so his, his kid is probably like, I'm that I'm like that then, dad. You know, I was like that with my dad. My dad sang opera. I used to want to sing opera. Yeah. I used to do a bit about how I was the only kid in the heterosexual closet because my dad's really flamboyant. My mom loves football. And, you know, I did this whole bit about how when I went through puberty, I was like, dad, I want to play catch with mom. You know, and it's like <laughs> so guys like Jake who can say that they have a lesbian sister and that's why they can uh, uh, reiterate abusive concepts that literally children right now are being abused by it. It's disgusting. And then he's going to attack me without even knowing me. Yeah. It's like, buddy, say it to my face. Yeah. Well, say I it say, to I, my town. Say it around people I'm at a bar with. He wouldn't say shit. You know, He'd only I, say I will say he was he's, he is he is an intelligent guy, and I and I give him a lot of credit for coming on. I mean, look, he had, he came on our show. He's not a libertarian, but he's willing to to talk, at least talk about it. And that is something, especially in this town. And you used to live here, man. And you know how progressives are. Ninety percent of the time, you can't even get a word in it doesn't matter so i respect him for that and i think that you know if i if you were in town and i said jake you want to go get a drink with owen he probably would say yes but you know that being said i'm not going to defend his take on this uh I, you know that's not what i'm here to do but of course not no i respect you guys' friendship i yeah. get it yeah and there's a lot of people and he doesn't think what he's saying by the way give him one day get one socratic method conversation and the dude would be like uh, yeah, that's insane. Yeah. It's like people, people are reckless and I've been reckless. I'm, I'm no, I'm a, I'm every, every human alive is a hypocrite. Every human alive is flawed. I'm not preaching. It's just, this is real basic shit. You can't fucking, uh, sterilize a kid, man. It's like, you know, I will go like when I lived in LA, I would, I would, um, you know, kind of bend with progressive ideals, even if I didn't quite understand them and be like, okay, but not this shit. You, the, there, there's a few hills to die on in this world, and one of them is child abuse, yeah. you know, and so I just I, I couldn't stomach it. I and I think and I think a lot of L.A. doesn't realize how much the world sees them as like the capital from Hunger Games and how pathetic it is. Oh, they definitely don't. I mean, you look at well, and I want to say this because I want to talk about Golden Globes later. But no, I mean, I brought this up a little bit in the email we had uh, living in L.A. And you said I heard you I think on Dave Smith's pod talking about how once you moved out of L.A., 
your wit instantly got sharper. And it really does like living here doles you down because everybody's so hypersensitive to everything, despite being this capital of entertainment and supposed wit and supposed intelligence. And, you know, all the sharpest minds come here. You get duller living here because everything is so progressive, so sensitive, so stupid that you end up dulling yourself down in order to get along. And you, Dude, it's you, you, it's you have to. It's almost like having to be drunk. Yeah, it's almost like a, a lot of smart people drink a lot because you almost have to make yourself dumb to not feel insane. Yeah, it's yeah. like LA is like the donkey years out of you know out of Pinocchio, where it's just you just keep taking these indulgences until you're a donkey. And these people are rich donkeys, man. And and when you're rich, you wake up, you know, same nightmares, different thread count on your sheets. It's not nothing comes from it, and it's like ah. Uh, the only reason that, you know, usually I'm a much uh, more cordial podcast guest, but when it comes to the kid, the child <laughs> abuse stuff, off with a, I know we're starting off on a tough topic. So it's one thing if someone has beef with me about a joke or about like I was rude to them at the yeah. bar or like uh, the fact that, you know, I, I didn't like Hillary Clinton, something like that. I'm fine with that. I don't even get emotional. The one thing that will make me lose my shit is this trans kid shit. Yeah. And it's like, so I, I just am very, very stern about it. And I just, I know that it's not always. You know, I probably sound like a dick a little bit, but I, I, that's a small price to pay if one kid doesn't get sterilized by listening to this podcast. Well, everybody jumped on you. So I said this earlier. Everybody jumped on you so hard and just, it, it was the instantaneous reaction. It's like, it's not even, you know, it's like, it's not even a thoughtful reaction. It's just like a, a nerve impulse that the left has when anybody challenges anything having to do with the progressive transgender, gay rights, et cetera, movement. And they're not listening to the context behind it where you're saying, I'm not saying this to be a dick. I'm not saying it's against trans. I'm saying this because there's a genuine concern. And there really, there is a genuine concern that people aren't considering. And it's just... They, they view it as, well, it's, you know, it, because the, these children have been, uh, they have been denied their rights to change genders and thus we must improve. Their rights. This is the way forward. Their right? fucking rights. That's the way, that's the way the left views it. Yeah. Instead of saying these, these somebody's motherfuckers, gotta, somebody's got to take a step back and say, hold on. You know, there might not be, this might not be the way forward for this kid. Why don't we question this rather than blindly acknowledge it, which is what so many psychologists do now. They just blindly acknowledge it and say, yes, yup, yup. You think you're a woman? You're a woman. Maybe March, that's not what they think. Maybe they're confused. You can be confused as a child. Dude, march into Auschwitz, man. It's like I was a World War II history major for this exact reason, because my town was the only town in, in all of America to take in Jews during the Holocaust. Um, and it's a small, shitty, redneck, deplorable town with three nuclear power plants. I do a bit that we were uh, District 12 from the Hunger Games. <laughs> and it's like we're the only ones who took in any Jews. It's like because people march. They just march to their own death. Yeah. And it's like, and, and I read this book once called Hitler's henchman, where it's like the, the, the banality of evil, you know, that like the, the Jake Westman's of the world are like the type that's like, yeah, yeah. It's so brave. So brave as these kids are just getting fucking their endocrine systems destroyed. And then they end up bitter and resentful of the world and they fucking shoot up a school. It's like, yeah, brave. So brave. It's like, dude, fucking think, man. It's like, that's the shit that leads to genocide. Yeah. And it's like, I, I, it's really tough as a parent, I think, because I see my son now and other people's kids. It's made me more compassionate to people because I see every human alive was once a, a, a kid. And I'm like, I, it makes me like love people more and like listen to them more. But at the same time, I'm like, you do not take another kid's ability to have a good life, you fucking sick prick. Be like, why? Because you got a script deal at Comedy Central. Do I've had fucking 10 of those. What hap- What comes of that? It's like, what is that? That's nothing. Why well, know it's something? A fucking childhood. And it's like these people are, are removing a child's ability of growth. And I, it's just a lot of these guys, man, they used to, when I had more LA power, it was like, they all followed me. They all fucking retweeted me and shit. And then once I stood for something and got um, kicked out of this club of retards. Yeah, quick. It's to, like quick to disenfranchise from you. Oh yeah, but then you see who your real friends are, man. And, and to be honest, most of them are the are the big dogs. You know, like the real, real legends are the ones that stand by you. You know, like Joe Rogan had me on twice and during that dark time. Yep. You know, Dave Rubin had me on. You know, Stephen Crowder. These guys are the ones that are the OGs, man. That they're like. You know, you'll lose all the Chelsea fucking handlers, you know. Oh, Chelsea, but, yeah, Chelsea Handler, who uh, just fat shamed somebody recently. Or, or no, who'd she accuse somebody of telling him to go suck a dick because he's a closet gay? 
recently on Twitter. Oh, well, they're all, oh, well, dude, my no, point no about repercussions, by the way. <laughs> oh, well, this is my point about Twitter. This is why the left is, is a bunch of fucking raving psychopaths. They say that uh, the, the Twitter is a private company, so you should ex- respect their ability to, you know, conduct business. It's like, all right, bitch, remember that when a homo wants a fucking wedding cake? <laughs> exactly, man. Yeah. And it's someone's like, you say homo, I'll say whatever I want because co- making someone uh, change their language for no reason, this, this compliance, that, that, that's how you break an animal. Like you say, don't stop saying Oriental. Why the fuck should we stop saying Oriental? Say Asian. Don't say Oriental. Why not? Uh, it's, it's a, it's a person, not a rug. It's from the Orient. Right. <laughs> they, well, they built, they built the railroad. So the Irish, do we not say Irish? I got a buddy building railroads right fucking now. My brother's a lumberjack. Like, do you think these people don't still exist? You, you sick, elitist cunt. It's like, and I will never change my language for these people because I know it's about intention. Mm-hmm. I once asked one of these leftist fucking idiots. I go, what's worse saying, saying uh, the word nigger makes me uncomfortable or African-Americans don't deserve rights. <laughs> you know, yeah, that's a good use point. your Use your brain. Is it word or and, and it's surprising how many people said the, the, the former and not the latter. And it, that's when I knew there was a real sickness out there and I didn't want to raise my children there. Well, that's I mean, that's a constant thing. I battle all the time. I'm, I'm in an ongoing war against uh, the welfare state as it exists and especially as it pertains to drug war and the welfare state for black communities, because people they'll, they'll talk all day long about how you can't talk about this. You can't talk about that and how we have to, you know, we have to respect the Black Lives Matter movement and, and all this. Shit. Oh, and you, God. And you go, look, what's happening right now is that they're in this fucking cage that's been built up by the drug war and by these entitlement welfare programs, which incentivize them to sit around. Meanwhile, you can't get a job after you've been arrested and you have a fucking uh, federal crime on your record anyway. So now you're just going to sit around and get money from the state. It's just like you're you're trapped. You're fucking trapped. But you're doing God's we work, give man. Them more money to be trapped longer. Dude, you're doing God's work, man. That's why I made sure that my fans didn't attack you. That's why I was like, I support Lions of Liberty. Uh, I'm dude, I, was, I, was, I was cracking my knuckles. I said, bring on the bears. No, nah, man. <laughs> no, but that's because what you're saying is so important. It's like if you read Black Redneck, White Liberal by uh, apparently self-hating black man Thomas Sowell, yeah. it's like that's how the left paints it, which is insane. You, that's like calling people house niggers. It's yeah. straight It's straight up fucking uh, yeah, plantation. Uncle, Uncle Tom, the, the, the old favorite. Right. And it's a way to keep black people in their place. It's the ultimate plantation mentality. If you read Black, Redneck, White, uh, Liberal, and Thomas Sowell is a Princeton educated economist, wrote the book on um, economics, you know, libertarian, conservative type guy. He grew up in Harlem in the 40s. And and back then, the black uh, family unit, it was a 90 percent rate of children being born in wedlock, which is the number one predictor of success. Uh, yes. And also having a complete families together is the number one predictor of how, yeah, of, of raising yourself out of poverty and, be, and raising to the next level of income bracket slash status. Exactly. And the welfare state incentivized single motherhood, but in any financial in- incentive will do that. And like people that want to judge the black community for uh, having, you know, five kids with five dads and being welfare mom. You, you you have no right to judge that because you don't understand not you i'm saying you you not you you'll clearly understand this but like <laughs> but financial incentives cripple any community and none of us are above it and this in this welfare state sickness is now invading the whites it, it's not just a black problem and it's like what they do is they make it so the state is the dad and the state is a sociopathic dad and then there's no actual man and they all end up in and you know, in, in prison for stupid, nonviolent drug laws. And then these kids are raised without a father figure. The mom is overwhelmed. So they, she beats the shit out of the kids. That's why on CNN, you see like, you know, there was this one time when this black uh, woman was just smacking her kid and saying, Darnell, you get out of the motherfucking street and said, smack him. And all these CNN uh, commentators are like, well, that is some good parenting. She stood up. That's how you make crazy people. <laughs> Like you just publicly beat your kid and there's no dad in the house like that kid's going to learn that violence is, is the solution. And, dude, my, hack, my my heart goes out to the black community and it is the state that ruined everything for them. Oh, and when you have the Larry, yeah, Larry Elder and all these guys speak up about it about it and they all say that these motherfuckers are self-hating and that women that want to be stay at home moms are self-hating. It's like, oh, you mean my mom, my wife? Both, you know, my wife has her master's in engineering. My mom has her PhD. Both cho- chose to be stay-at-home moms because they saw the value of being a mom. And these fucking feminist cunts are going to judge my women in my life. 
No. So yeah, that's the issue I had with what Jake was saying. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's a good. That's a good way to put a ball on that. And, uh, I do. You know, I just I, I have to be so excited. I was just cracking up. By cracking myself up a little bit because you're talking about your son. And I was just saying, I was like, I was like, God, I, I pity him if his son's real rebellious one day. Cause yeah, you always rebel against your parents by doing exactly what they don't want. So, you know, congratulations on your future transgender son. <laughs> ah, that's hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> someone's right. like, what if your son was gay? I'm like, if he's healthy, I would be happy with anything yeah, my son is. Who, who cares if he's gay? I mean, like, really, it, 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 who cares if he's transgender as long as he can make that decision as an adult himself later on? Adult, you know, adult, you know, like your, your brain yeah. isn't even done forming till you're 25. Right. Like, yeah, it's like, and also it's a, it's a really tough road. It's a really tough road. So I, once you start getting into chemicals and hormones, we just don't know enough. And if someone wants to tell me the the blatant paradox that their gender is societal, yet you can be a woman and a man, uh, you don't need a BA in math to figure <laughs> out that that's a basic paradox of existence. And I just think that a lot of times people have feminine qualities or they're just gay and they just say that they are women and not just effeminate men, right. you know, and like that can I, be a product of, of anything because it, you, have, you make a very good point there. It's like, yeah, you could say I'm a woman in a man's body because maybe you have a secret shame about being gay and you figure this is a better way to do it. Exactly. When you a woman, then there's not the shame. Maybe it's a religious thing. We don't know. Exactly. But, That's a brilliant point. I mean, it's just, it, it's. And, and and I agree with you completely there. It's and there and also the point you made earlier. We don't know enough about this yet to make this massive shift in the entire way we view it as a culture and the way we view it as a as a medical science and a, and a psychological issue. All of a sudden, we make in a, in a period of what three years a complete turn, and we say now everybody is transgender. Everybody gets a, a generous reassignment to hormones and the surgery. And we ha we don't know how this is going to shake out. This is new to be able to do. This is new. No, so the yeah, it's generation. Not. Like, we're why don't you wait and see how this is going to come out slowly by people that actually know what they're you know know what they're trying to do rather than saying boom everybody gets it one you know well, the, well everybody gets a dick or a vagina. Well, the left is is riddled with toxic femininity where it's like it's kind of like Chelsea Handler. It's when women don't have kids, they treat the whole world like a kid. You know, like this, yeah. uh, this high anxiety of like babying, like, don't say this word. Don't make this person feel bad. How dare you? You stay away from, from this person, even though that person's wrong. That's a great quality in a mom of a fucking one-year-old. Yeah. It's not a great quality to treat a nation that way. You know, I don't let people talk to me that way. If, you know, it's like, how dare you say that word? It's like, what? What word? I'll say anything I want. I'm a grown man who bought a house off of jokes. <laughs> I, I have a wife, a kid, and another kid on the way, and I live on top of a hill. Yeah, where the it's hell like, where you're not gonna... do you live in now? I don't even know. I was... Oh, I live near Lake Placid, New York, Saranac Lake, New York, upstate oh, okay. New York. Yeah, it's where my family is all lives. And um, it's just so breathtakingly beautiful that, you know, once uh, I saw that you you couldn't point out that Beyonce doing a Black Panther salute during the Super Bowl may, oh, yeah. may, may open up some some problems uh, <laughs> because it's like whenever someone calls you racist as their response, you know that they're just wrong and they won't admit they're wrong. Oh, it's the, it's the, it's the go-to de facto response to anything. You're a racist. You're a sexist. You're a bigot. Those are the three things that people throw at you immediately. I've had good, very good friends tell me that I was a racist or sexist in response to arguments where it made no, no logical sense. And it does, it doesn't ever address the actual argument. Oh, no. And, and, I'd, and I'd like to point out to the any uh, classical liberals, which was what I always considered myself until they w became communists. Until Joy Reid redefined it uh, in completely wrong terms. I don't know if you saw. Oh, that. dude. No, but I, oh, you know, I'm, I, I, dude, most liberals are libertarians. Like we were on board what you are. That was what I thought liberal was my whole life. And now it's and so. Um, I can't remember. I was talking. I, I, I was just I was just on a bit on a rant. But um <laughs> I can't, yeah, we can take I'm a off. here. Collect yourself because this is a perfect time to take a quick commercial break. And uh, we'll be back, guys, with more Owen Benjamin in just a second. Hey, guys, you might remember that I recently said that this is the libertarian moment and that we need more people to stand up and run for office. Now, if you're tired of watching Liberty erode and you plan to stand up and run for office, I want you to call on a team that has over 20 years experience, Global Alliance Communications. They specialize in data analytics, identifying and mobilizing voters. They offer live voter outreach, data acquisition, compliance, recorded messages, text messaging with full social media touch points, and teletown halls. 
Campaigns of all types and sizes are encouraged to reach out, and you can find out more by visiting their website at www.gacigroup.com or email info at gacigroup.com. All right, welcome back. We are here. Well, I am here, <laughs> the royal we, with Owen Benjamin, comedian and pariah <laughs> for, ah. for his many transgressions against the progressive left. Uh, and again, guys, I want to remind you, you can find show notes for this episode, lionsofliberty.com forward slash ELL55. So what I want to talk about coming back in here, so we, are, we discussed a bunch of transgender stuff, the Jake stuff. Now I want to turn our attention towards what everybody can't stop talking about, and it's this Aziz and Sorry uh, story that came out on Babe.net. I guess Babe.com was probably porn, if we're being honest. Yeah. <laughs> I love I can't wait. I love when these feminists go to register that and they're like, son of a fucking bitch. Babe.com yeah. turns out, guys, it's just topless babes. We gotta go alternative. <laughs> so anyway, but there's this story about the disease and sorry. What this this woman, you know, they call her Grace, uh, which makes me think that she must have been Korean. But so they've got this woman, Grace, in the story, and she alleges that this date with Aziz and Sorry was the worst night of her life because she met him. They exchange numbers. They go out. They uh, She meets at his, at his apartment. They go to a restaurant. They have a quick meal. He goes, hey, why don't you come back to my place? They do end up making out, having some sexual interactions uh, of, of different varieties. And she alleges that despite her giving non-verbal clues to him that she was uncomfortable and the fact that she didn't leave sucked his dick and did all the all sorts of other assorted things uh but fun if you're into them that she was taken advantage of so that's that's it in a nutshell and i link to that at the show notes page is why i mentioned that at the top of the show so owen what's your take on the story uh, and on aziz in general and then as a secondary thing i want to get into male feminist Great. Disease is a total piece of shit. But real quick, um, <laughs> the Me Too movement, I think it's really funny when you see it on Twitter. It's it literally says pound Me Too. <laughs> but uh, it, I, I, th this is what I think about the uh, the Aziz thing. If, if legally witch hunt, legally due process would exonerate legally. I don't even think he did anything illegal. It's socially I think the due process should destroy this guy because this is this is how I view it. Whatever social rules you perpetuate, and this guy is a powerful guy. Like he he's a culture pusher, and he's a male feminist who literally wrote the book on um, uh, Rome, like dating in the digital age, and he presents himself as this like friend to all women and this ally, and that all men are toxic. And can you believe how bad? Uh, men are ladies and like blah 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 right, and, he's and so then threatening soft spoken you know i'm just a little aziz i'm cute right and that shit that he pushes that like all women should always be believed and that like if a man shows a woman his dick like he's like a total piece of shit like everything he does he should hang by his own rope socially he shouldn't go to prison but like I, I, I was trying to work on an example. Okay, say take take Ben Shapiro. He's a uh, an Orthodox Jew, so kosher. Mm -hmm. If you see him eating a uh, cheeseburger, it's way different than if you see me eating a cheeseburger because he's perpetuating an image that he will never eat meat and cheese together. Okay, now take that and say that the accusation of eating a cheeseburger uh, has has put men in prison. And that, like, he's one of the guys that says you can absolutely never eat a cheeseburger. You got to be kosher. If someone smells like a cheeseburger, they're ostracized, they're fired. And then you see him eating a cheeseburger. That is way different than seeing a normal person eat a cheeseburger that is not an a, a Orthodox Jew. And that's why I think that it could be perceived as a witch hunt on Aziz Ansari uh, if he um, – disease, I'm sorry. <laughs> but uh, if, if it's legal – because it's like he didn't break the law. You know, the testimony, it sounds like the girl was um, giving a lot of mixed signals. Uh, well, she like did. She, I mean, it's like you go in, he, he's he's naked, you're naked. He's, you know, the first thing he does is like sit you on a counter and uh, 
and eat you out and you don't leave. Like she, she didn't leave. And, and, and by the way, I agree with everything you just said that he does. If you're going to present that standard, you have to live up to that standard. And I, exactly. agree, I agree with you completely. I guess where I was looking at it from is the standard that's now being set and, and seems to have a prevalent mindset in the, in these women's minds that are millennial age or younger that, guys should be able to know what you're thinking at all times and that you're not in control of your own body or your own actions. I mean, it's season sorry is a little fucking dude and he's like, he's the most non-threatening guy. You know, I mean, I could literally, I mean, I could so, knock him down so, with the head of my dick. If I want. So is Goebbels. Goebbels <laughs> was four eleven with a limp. True. But Goebbels, who knows how many women he got alone and he might've been smoother than disease. He might've taken. No, nah, he was a rapist. Ger- Goebbels used to cut their eyelids off. Oh, Jesus Christ, Owen. Come True, on, man. man. Yeah, it's socialism, bro. His dates? Uh, no, like uh, oh, Joseph well, Goebbels. I was talking he, about yeah. dates. Oh, okay. No, no, I don't know about dates. I thought, but, you, were, uh, I thought you were talking about like a book from like Gals for Goebbels or something like that. Oh, no. They, they probably the just raped. They probably just raped and killed him if they're Jewish. But uh, <laughs> oh, God. Uh, no, but, but Aziz, it's like the, the, the standard they set, and it's not even millennial girls, it's left leftist millennial girls. It, there's so many women that are not crazy. Like the vast majority of the population is not what you see in L.A. It's not what you see in TV. And it's infuriating to live in reality and witness like people that I still consider friends just caught in this delusion. Yeah. It's like. You know, Aziz basically is pushing a a feminist agenda that literally says you have to verbally confirm every movement you do with a woman. So that's okay. impossible with the move that it this was the story's worth a read, just uh I guess to learn some some new tricks. But it, it the one move that he kept doing that this woman's the said, claw. The claw <laughs> Yeah, the claw where he put his two fingers in like a like a V, like you're like you're pretending to be a snake with your hand in her throat, and then he'd go and and like rubber vagina with the, with his claw fingers. Oh, dude, it's the it's hypocrisy. And then you got like this girl is is she's of her own agency. I'm not defending her. I'm not white knight in this chick. She's uh, you know, she she probably saw the power of him and the status she could get as as her uh, yeah, of course. right. At the same time, she's a 22 year old girl. He's a 35 year old guy worth like 50 million dollars who's like really intelligent and manipulative as shit. Yeah. So it's like when you weigh those two together, I'm gonna go with don't do this shit to chicks. Like if like if he was 22, that's one thing. If he was 18, if he was not this. The irony is, is the left talks about its power for the dynamic of power, white privilege, all this shit and all this stuff that it isn't. And then in the place that it is, they don't admit it. It's like that power disparity couldn't be bigger. It's true. As but, the, I, but I don't have a problem with that. I mean, for me, I don't have an issue with, with her no, if wanting she grabs power. Cock. No, if she grabs his cock and says, fuck me, not if she's like uncomfortable and he's clawing her throat. But it's, it's like, like I, I feel like that she had a million opportunities to leave. And I, and I, of course, I'm not, you know, I have a sister. I don't want her to get raped. I have, you know, I, I don't want anybody to get raped. I think it's one of those. Oh, bro, I'm with you hundred percent, bro. I'm with you hundred percent. Yeah. But like, it's like, I do want to call out shit when I see him. Like, I'm like this, it, reading this story, like 15 times. I'm like, why don't you fucking leave? Why don't you put your clothes up? Why don't you fucking leave? Like you didn't say anything. I, it's just, it doesn't excuse Aziz for being a fucking hypocrite, but it's just a, such an insane thing to be like, go along with all this shit. Even if you're like. What are you, are you blinking at him? You're SOSing with your eyes. It's like, I don't know what you're doing. You know? Yeah, I, I do a bit about that where it's like, uh, my girl was like, how come you didn't leave when, when I wanted to leave? I'm like, well, you didn't say to leave. She's like, yeah, but I, I, I said I was having fun, but I looked at you this way. Yeah, no, I, I get what you're saying. If this happened to you, I, I, would, I would defend you to the fuck. I'd be like, this chick is out of her fucking mind. Yeah. But see, this is the thing about Aziz. And this is the thing about uh, Louis CK and Weinstein and all these guys. Yeah. It's like, if we don't hold them to the standard, they are trying to hold us to. I was, uh, uh, shamed on Twitter, um, by thousands of feminists, including that fat, that fat degenerate Andy Richter even got involved over a joke. that I said, I said, uh, uh, women marry their best friends. Men don't. That was my joke. And, and Truest to be honest, statement ever made. Right, hundred percent. My and wife, so, by the way, has no illusions about that. None. It's like 
the irony is, is, is it's almost like I put her on a higher level. I'm like, you're my wife. I fucking, I, I don't fuck other chicks because I love you and I work my ass off for you. Like that's different than a man. Like, and it's just, get, and fundamentally, like we pretend it's, this gets back to the whole concept of fucking everybody's the same and genders are totally the same. No, exactly. you're not. You interact very differently with your guy friends than your girlfriends. My wife, I love my wife to death, obviously. Uh, but. I don't interact with her the same way as I do with guys that I'm growing up with and I've known I've been friends for years. You have a completely different interaction on a different level because of your biology and the way that people just interact naturally as a sex. All right, so check this out. This is my theory. Well, I'll just finish that. Okay, so I lost work because of that. I was humiliated because of that one tweet. That's, Andy that's, fucking- that's unbelievable. Right. So this is my point. You can't have... um I'm not down with multi-legalism. Like, I don't think Aziz should be judged legally any different than me. But socially, if you're part of a a culture that pushes that complete horseshit and we get hurt by it and they don't, that is a uh, that is a real problem that will grow. That is that that's basically the caste system where now you have the uh, the Brahmins and the Kshatriyans and the untouchables. Like if he gets to do something that I don't get to do. Yeah. Without social ramifications, now we're talking about royalty. That's true, man. And they're creating a priesthood of feminists uh, for themselves. They get to, in secret, just as the priests of old did, in secret, they get to have all of the orgies and uh, and we get all the shit. A hundred percent. It's a secular religion, and this is this is what I'm talking about with uh, uh, toxic femininity. Like women like contradictions because when they're ovulating, they want a different man than when they're not ovulating. Like I do a song called "How to Love a Woman" and. Um, You know, the jokes are like, dress nice, but look like you don't try, you know, listen like a woman, but act like a guy, kiss like a prince, but fuck me like you left prison. You know, it's like, it's like uh, be in good shape, but don't work out too much. It's like care, but don't care. And a lot of it's easy if you don't think to just think women are crazy, but they're actually not crazy. It, 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 it's just like uh, Chelsea Handler's psychosis is because she never had a child. Like that would have been great with a kid. And that's where all that would have went, but she didn't just like this, um, contradiction stuff when they're ovulating they want an animal and when they're not they want an accountant and it's like you see that duality in most female movies you have uh jacob and edward you know you all you have like uh the notebook you have the animal and you have like the good guy and it's like they don't want another man they just want you to be both yeah uh and they want you to shift based on whether or not they want the the hard genes for the ovulation or the the caring father and so when you when you don't uh, have any pushback on this because of male cunt feminists like Aziz Ansari and and Andy Richter, that tubby faced bitch. It's like what happens is the entire culture becomes this contradiction. Uh, uh, Donald Trump is literally Hitler. Now give your guns to Hitler. <laughs> I know. It's like, yeah. uh, no, no. How about how about no? Well, it's also I love the contradiction, too, between. Uh, well, this is totally different talk. But, you know, his recent comments about other countries being a shithole and the whole thing. We're like, well, this you can't call that country a shithole. It's like, well, then why do they want to come here? Well, because the right. country's a shithole. <laughs> Right, right. I thought you said that we had to save these people from their own countries. Right, yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, and, and they don't even hide it. It's just like women. It's just like that's the natural state of women. That's why they don't feel shame from it. Yeah. It's like men would be ashamed by that. We, we'd be like, oh, shit, a contradiction. Because we're raised from hunting where it's like high skill set. We cut the weak. We praise the strong meritocracy. That's why most men are libertarians or conservatives. And most women are liberal and fucking, you know, that whole thing. And it's so like. That's why when a man, like a woman will protect the weak, where it's like, oh, Tina's sad. We got to get out of here. Get out, get away from Tina, even though she's irrational. Mm -hmm. If a guy is being irrational in a group, we're just like, get out of here, Kevin. You're being a a dick. But like, on their shit immediately. You're like, knock it off or fuck yourself. Hunting parties. And then the one guy, and then the strong people, you're like, oh, that guy's really smart. I'm going to listen to his podcast. That guy's the fastest. I'm going to put him, he's captain. And women are like, she's the prettiest. Tell everybody she has herpes. Ruin her fucking life. (laughs) And it's like we're seeing that culturally now, and they keep talking about toxic masculinity, and it's the exact opposite. It's like homophobic people secretly want to suck your dick. Well, you know, there's a there's a guy named Robin Kerner who actually I'm going to have on the podcast in a couple of weeks to talk about this exact topic. But he wrote a whole article for uh, Fee.org, and it was just talking about toxic masculinity is not the problem. Uh, the problem is that, you know, the masculinity that is what we should be emulating is this Big, strong guys doing the right thing, not, you know, everybody's uh, everybody needs to kowtow and everybody needs to to watch everything they're saying and be a friend to everybody else and feminist and weak. It's just that that concept of 
like you look at in nature because we're talking about nature and hunting parties a little bit. You look at the like I will never forget this. So this illustration of a seal. You know, there's these grand, big gang of seals. There's the big strong male, and then there's the other little seal that sneaks in and tries to secret fuck the girls behind the big man's back. And of course, that's what, uh, you know, you look at like the feminists. They're like the sneaky seal. And they're doing this, you know, they're, they're cuddling up to the women. They're like, I'm your best friend. I'll always be here for you. I'm sensitive. I'm just like you. But then they're still men at the end of the day. This is just their way to sneak fuck the women because they're not the biggest. They're not the strongest. They're not the fastest. It's so, the worst of both worlds. It's literally, it's psychotic. All right, go on. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, no, no. I mean, that, that was basically it. It's just, and, and women don't want to, to realize this is the case. It's like the, it's like the example of the best friend that never gets to fuck the girl, except now, uh, they're, they're getting to fuck the girl. Well, I know when they fuck them is when they're asleep. <laughs> it's like, see, this is the thing. Like, uh, Waking like normal the men, claw, the Aziz and starry story. Exactly. And you think that this is one of the bad ones. I'm sure he's got way worse. Oh, Hundreds I, up. I'm sure you're right. I'm sure you're right. This is, this is compulsive. I mean, he did this from a girl he met at a party that night and didn't even really think about it. It's like, yeah. think about th- th- this is why I like real men and not these, el- these beta fucks. It's like, a real man is just as horny as anybody. It's just he wants to impress the woman by doing something great. Where it's like, I got a good job. I'll take you to a nice dinner. I comb my hair. Or even you just know? being like, you know, you just being that man who is considerate and mm-hmm. and kind but strong at the same time. You know, it's like you, just being a being the epitome of what a man was like. Look, a John Wayne, and I mean, yeah, I'm sure John Wayne's got all sorts of shit he did too. But well, whatever. In theory, a you know the John Wayne, strong, uh, silent type, but always does the right thing. Provides, uh, does the right thing when called upon. Uh, is a good you know good for strength, good for protection, all that kind of shit. And and is a caretaker in the male sense is a good thing. That's not being toxic. If you hold a, a door for a woman, or if you are trying to, uh, to fight to protect a woman in, in a circumstance where you think she's in danger, that's not toxic. That's just called being a man. That's called doing the right thing. And it depends on the circumstance you're in, whether that's, you know, either decried or applauded by the feminist. I know many of you are facing major decisions with your health care right now, and I want to make sure that you know about an amazing alternative to your standard corporatized health insurance known as Health Excellence Plus. Health Excellence Plus is an incredible program that helps you keep medical costs under control by taking charge of your own health care and not leaving all the decisions about what doctors you see, and what procedures you need or don't need up to some corporate bureaucrat along with providing 24-7 access to medical professionals, tax-deferred health savings accounts, and preventative care, Health Excellence Plus empowers you to finally take control of your health care. To learn more, head on over to lionsofliberty.com slash health or call the special hotline for Lions of Liberty listeners at 855-290-4447. Be sure to mention Lions of Liberty. Yeah, and, it, and you don't even have to be big or rich or tough. You just have to want good and, like, be ambitious. And and you got to hold your woman in, like, like a high status. You In your mind, your woman is your queen. And you can be a exactly. janitor. And if you work your ass off as that janitor and you come home and say, baby, I made this floor fucking shine, she's going to love you. And it's like these, 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 these Ansari types. And I've been mocking this guy for years. I've gotten shit over this. I am not using this as an opportunity to shit on Aziz Ansari. Well, I've been, I, I really don't think he's funny at all. I think no, he's, he's terrible. Shit, and he's a piece, and I, he's a, he's a horrible human being yeah, too. So I, dude, I've said this. You want, I have no, no but I, interest in I'm not even amping it up. It's yeah. just the world finally caught up to what I know. Like these guys are the type to capitalize on weakness. Like, like a, right, exactly. a normal man wants a woman in her strong state. He wants to, to say feel that he's won her over by being charming. Or by right. being wanted and attracted. That's that's real masculinity. This woman wants me. I'm not forcing myself on her. She wants me because of who I am and and how I come across. Rather than, yeah, the Aziz and Saris who are sorry. Yeah, a know. young right, a young photographer, you know, a, a girl that's probably a little lost, a girl who's probably a fan of his, not she's not sexually attracted to him because of the way he acts. And she but he will try and get her drunk. He will try and uh, uh, do an illusion of control, you know, like ordering everything for her and telling her what clothes to wear and shit. It's a trick. And it always it always ends in regret. And so that's why it's like 
Yeah, she's she's regret. It's not rape. It's not sexual assault. It's fucking regret. And it's like, that's why I'm not pushing that he should be uh, charged with anything. But like, that's a piece of shit of a guy. And I'm so sick of these people being held on stages and giving golden awards. They're fucking garbage. Like Aziz Ansari, you could. I have a lot more sympathy for Louis C.K., even though what he did, it was probably a little worse because he didn't let girls leave a room. and He's whacking off. But at least he's talented. (laughs) It's like it's like you can always tell the real propagandists, the real piece of shit people in Hollywood are the ones that aren't even good at their job and they're famous. You're like, oh, you're working for some rent collectors, some rent seekers. You you're where you you are uh, you don't even realize that you're pushing something for someone that's making a lot of money on you, bitch. And that's him. You know, yeah. Girls be like, what? And I'd be like, what? Yeah, it's I like, think- ladies. Yeah, it's it's yeah. just exactly right. That is literally his stand up act in a nutshell. It has no there's no real jokes to it. It's just kind of stupid voices and stupid reactions. And he filled it and he filled a niche at the right time. He he happened to fall into the place where they said, all right, we need this. Per- we need a character filling this position. He got his hit on Parks and Rec and then, you know, parlayed that into career. And I can't begrudge him that success. Uh, You know, fuck, man. I would take it in a sec in a heartbeat if I could, too. It's not earned, though. It's not like Tosh or Galifianakis or. I can list a million comics, Nick Swartzen, like a million comics where you see him live and you're like, and they're grinding. And then you just see him pop and you're like, oh, sweet. That guy just. One of my favorite jokes of all time, a fellow pianist like yourself. And by the way, guys, please do check out Owen's website, www.hugepianist.com. But uh, Galifianakis had a great routine. I remember I was in college at the time and it was before he blew up. He just had his Comedy Central special, but he's playing the piano very somberly. And, uh, you know, leans in and he goes, oh, I leaned into a woman. And I said, I want you to touch my pussy. And she said, what? And I said, that's what you're supposed to say. And it was just a great, <laughs> funny joke. He delivered it. Fuck it. I didn't do a credit because you can never do other people's jokes. No, he's a genius. I it, mean, the guy's a genius. genius. Yeah. Really- like he used to do it. He used to do these characters where he's like, this is, uh, this is the condescending illiterate. And he'd pretend to take off glasses and he'd go, I've already told you, I can't read. <laughs> And it's like, or, or, you know, you have just, just crusher comics like Sebastian or there's a million of them. There's, there's so many good comics out there. Uh, 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 what's his name? Uh, Norm Macdonald is a crusher. Oh, Bill dude, Norm Macdonald is the, maybe the best comedian ever. He, I think, I think all time. I, I literally, I, I think he's all time. Cause I was disappointed by Chappelle's last special. And he was always my top, yeah. if definitely top three, but possibly one. And then this last one, someone activated that dude's chip. Cause that guy was as gangster as you could get, as far as like no fucks given oh, yeah. and just. Being... And, but this Hitler, last Hitler's one... dog, right? What was his last special called? No, well that's great. That's uh, I'm oh McDonald oh, is yeah, is still McDonald. crushing. No, I'm talking about Chappelle. Chappelle's oh, okay, last sorry. special, the most recent one I was disappointed in because it, it just he was saying things that aren't true, right. and it's like he's still a great comic, but he was in my top three. Norm McDonald is always funny. Like he never has that chip get activated by the state. Yeah. That's like, all right, you know, make fun of Trump in this way. Contradict yourself eight fucking ways. Oh, yeah. You know, like when he's talking about, uh, you know, Trump saying crazy shit about like bringing coal back and jobs. He's like, coal, bitch, I never seen coal. You know, it just sounds like an ignorant fucking right. idiot. Right. And then like 10 minutes before he was talking about all these people, these white people without jobs with coal dust on their face. It's like, okay, so what is is he crazy or not, uh, Dave? Like, have you not proofread your own fucking set like that? Because if you're not if you're not lying, that never happens. Like, you know, like down the road, you might be like, oh, I was wrong about that. But like it doesn't contradict in the same set because you blatantly know that there's people that need jobs and you've seen coal on a man's face. So you've never seen coal. You, You want the jobs to stay in China? Well, it's like, buddy, when he was like, oh. Uh, Donald Trump isn't here for you, nigga. He's here for me or whatever the fuck he said. It's like, and then he's crazy for saying he wants to bring jobs back to people who do coal work. It's like, you just said the opposite. And like that shit, that's when people, you know, I do a podcast called Why Didn't They Laugh? So I can really analyze comedy. And it's like, that basic shit is so bad where it's like, okay, you now, you're now nothing to me. Yeah. And it's like, I'll watch, uh, you know, Killing Him Softly and shit. It's still one of the, it's one of the best things I've ever seen in my life. It, it, it was in, in, inspiring. But like, it's not Norm MacDonald. You know, it's like, eh, you know, Hitler had a dog. 
It's like just everything, just, just like Elfinakis, uh, Mitch Hedberg, you know, uh, oh, yeah. Christopher Walken in his own weird way, Phil Hartman. There's people that like that just anything they say is funny because they're so in that zone of like perfect truth irony. Yeah. And it's like Chappelle used to be that way. Like he could take a long drag on a cigarette and sit there in silence and you just start laughing because you know he's in that pocket. But he's not in that pocket anymore. That last special is mediocre. I give it a B minus. Yeah, it's it's tar- it's terrible to see a downfall of a of a legend, especially for Chappelle, who was so I mean, his joke construction was so iconic, and his like his callbacks were so dead on. So to hear that he's just like abandoning, he's basically completely changing, and, and as you said, abandoning a premise and and changing the entire concept and ignoring previous material just doesn't make sense. It makes you wonder. I mean, honestly, if he's if he's lost it a little bit up up top. Well, I think chip activation. It's like you don't think <laughs> yeah, you don't sure think that he. You don't think he knows about no, but I'm dead serious. I think it's subtle. I don't think it's an actual chip, but it's like you don't think he knows about the welfare state. Like are are people are black people blaming Trump for their problems? There, you you literally like a retarded donkey knows that that isn't true. Yeah. It's like since Trump's been in office, and I'm not this giant Trump guy. He's way better than Hillary. Neither am I, man. But I I have found myself defending Trump more. Me and more. too. Yeah. Me too, man. Because it's like uh, uh, black unemployment is at the lowest it's been. Yep. It, it's like Obama was not approval rate book. has doubled with Black uh, America since he's coming to office. Oh yeah, and he's and he's yeah. He, I think he'd actually do a good job at at lowering the incarceration rate. I don't think that he wants to spend money on blankets and fucking pillows and shit for people that smoked weed. Yeah. I just don't think that's his MO. That's not a businessman MO. I keep hoping he's going to get rid of Sessions, man. But so far, he's not. And he's going along with all of uh, of little Keebler Elf bullshit. So. I know. This, see, I'm, I'm torn on this because I obviously want marijuana legal and all that. Like, obviously. But, like, this is the issue I have. Where it's the same with DACA. If you pass a law... How, you got to enforce the law just because or else you're not in a democracy. It's almost like a scam where it's like, OK, we pass a law. Now it's racist to enforce a law that we just passed. Right. It's like that. That's the issue I have where it's like if he was pulling the authoritarian king shit and was like, all right, I'm doubling marijuana laws. That would be crazy. But if he's enforcing laws that 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 people voted on. Uh, I, it's, it's a tough, it's a tough argument, but yes, you bring up a really good point though. Why the fuck doesn't California, why don't all these other asshole cities and states, instead of, uh, saying, all right, we're sanctuary cities, we're not going to arrest illegal immigrants, which plays into the welfare state and all this other shit people voted for, you know, DACA is a thing you have to, you're supposed to enforce federal laws on immigration. These people are still here illegally. They still broke the law. So it's the only point of having a government is fucking border security. Right. And, and it's like, well, and enforce if you, if you want to be a sanctuary state to something, how about you fucking drop all the laws about the drug war? Why don't you, why don't you help people that way? Cause it's a lot more people getting their lives fucked over in a vastly larger sense than you taking care of some immigrants that are going to come in here and hopefully contribute. But who knows? Maybe they come in here and just get on, get on board the welfare train in California, especially where we're already fucked out the ass with, with the number of amount of money we spend on welfare. So. Oh yeah. And we can't get out of it. It's like, it's an exponential growth curve. And it's like, it, if you, if you even question it, you're called racist. Yep. It's like, that's, that's okay. This is, this is why the left has lost its mind and it's toxic. You know, <laughs> what we we're talking about earlier, it's like Trump is actually the least racist of all immigration people because he wants a merit, a merit based uh, immigration yeah. policy, yeah. which is what anybody that's fair wants. Like I would, I would be completely fine with covering up the name of the immigrant, what country they're from, what religion they are, and just just basically list what skills they have, what their criminal history exactly. is. And it's like that is the opposite of racism. That is that is what the left wants is a race based immigration policy where of course uh, it's buying where, votes, it's but it's importing blocks of votes. Exactly. Right. And that's what my buddy uh Eric Weinstein was talking about. With uh, with rent collectors and and uh, he has this this four quadrant. Uh, he's a mathematician. He's fucking genius. Yeah, Brett Weinstein, Weinstein's brother, right? Yeah, yeah. He has a four quadrant uh um map of the social and political dynamics of American or world culture, and the uh, there's the dupes, which are like the Kimmels and the Colberts and the people that went to Yale and make like seven hundred grand a year, and they think they know shit, but they really don't know shit. And then you have the rent collectors, the rent seekers. Those are the people that make money on the Fed or like 
Social Security. We're talking a trillion dollar movements of money. And they need these fucking dupes to to push society to go with some shit for them. And then you have, you know, actual troglodytes, like people that are more emotion. It's not worse than the dupes, though. It's a similar thing. They're emotionally driven by like just pure patriotism or shit like that. And then you have, uh, I think, people like us. That's kind of like the uh, the outs the the people that are just trying to speak out about what's actually happening. And those are kind of like the four quadrants. And it's like, and you can see the rent collectors, the rent seekers push all of society with these stupid things like Jake Weissman's fucking trans kid thing. That is that that's designed. Like one, okay, the state welfare system, the biggest threat to it is a family unit. Mm -hmm. Like you want single moms, you want a bunch of kids, you know, you want, um, and you want to destroy the family. You want to destroy gender. You want to destroy all this shit. You want to destroy. There was an LA Times article today, which shot, well, op-ed. So they didn't write it because they're all lefties, but uh, shockingly made the statement, which is completely true that, you know, this, the government and the people that control the welfare state exist and they want to grow the consumer base which is exactly what you're talking about they have yeah that, that's yeah that, that's why they tell uh women that empowerment is working a job and not needing a man and getting abortions and it's like okay well uh you can do that that should be on the table that's on the table that's your 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 freedom but like that isn't female empowerment in fact like statistically that will make you real sad and you wear a really dumb hat it's like what they want is they want to double the taxes. Yeah. And it's like an actual libertarian would know that if you take the million woman march and each woman chips in a thousand bucks and doesn't do their stupid, ridiculous, embarrassing, childlike display, you would have a billion dollars. You put oh, that yeah. in a hedge fund. You just funded Planned Parenthood forever. Exactly. God, I was that's what I posted on my fucking Facebook wall. I was like, if all of you assholes who were raging about this shit just gave twenty dollars to Planned Parenthood, it would be a moot issue. Right. So self-funded. Like you want daddy government. They want the government to be a, a father. And in the in the in the the rent seekers uh on the left. They they want people to feel like it's empowering to give the government more power where they're like, no, we want the government to decide all our social issues, that Planned Parenthood should be funded by tax money. Yeah. And it's like that is driving people on the right crazy. And there will be a breaking point. This is what I predict. And it will come. It's inevitable. It's math. It's um, they're overusing. Uh, these taboos, right? Racist, sexist, bigot, homophobe, to the point where they're now up to white supremacists. That's basically you start with Adderall, then you start doing blow, then you get to meth, then you get to crack, right? Yeah. We we're developing Not that a res- I know, but yes, <laughs> there, we're de- yeah, we're developing a, a a resistance to taboos. So next up, actual racism. And that's a monster that people haven't really seen in a while. We've seen, you know, we're seeing, yeah, um, seeing little glimpses of it with like you, you see glimpses of it. But man, I, I haven't heard it. I haven't. I grew up in, in a pretty for as much as a redneck town as I grew up in. It was not racist. It was it was tribal, you know, like uh, Catholic churches that fight each other. But like uh, it wasn't like that. You'd have stereotypes, you know, and you'd have like uh, generalizations and shit, but not real racism. And if you keep pushing white people that any opinion they have is racist, that their opinion on guns is racist, their opinion on, you know, where they want to worship, how they want to raise their child, their opinion on trans issues is racist. It will pop. Yep. And the thing about American whites that are different than European whites is we didn't have two world wars wiping out the most aggressive and warlike of our genes. And so I think people should seriously pump the brakes because it's not going to be like Sweden and fucking Germany. It would be bad. Yeah. And there's a and, and, and people that mock Christianity are so wrong because there's a lot of militant motherfuckers with guns and they hate the left. And the only thing keeping them from shooting them is Jesus. So, like, people seriously have to fucking rethink this shit. I, you know, I'm with you. It's like, they, that's what I always laugh at when I see these people. Like, you, know, it, you saw it in action with all this Antifa shit. As soon as the right was like, oh, these people are going to come and they're going to try to beat us up. Okay, well, now we know what's coming. And they just started beating the shit out of Antifa easily because they're bigger, stronger, well prepared. <laughs> Oh, it's not even close. No, like it, it, it would be like a, somebody... a bloodbath. If the left and the right ever actually, if there was actually a civil war, it would be 
a it would be like the Iraq war in the George W. Bush era where it was like two days and done. Like their their country's destroyed. Like it would just be gone. They'd all be done. Dead, oh, and I don't I don't want that. I, I I'm be, not, no, we're not no, definitely not. Not advocating for it, but that is what would happen. Uh, oh, it it will ha- it will happen. And it's like they block people on Twitter. I had a friend crying on my shoulder recently because of all the people he killed in, in Afghanistan. And like how we're all, you know, equals, but then when he gets drunk, he wants to make all the sand glass. Mm. And these are like skilled dudes. Yeah. And it's like if they want to battle, he had before he died of heroin, he he was he was carving fuck Hillary into his skin. Jesus. Yeah, and this is an, a college educated uh, uh, D1 baseball player who did three tours in Afghanistan and became a, a, a different dude. And so it's like the Jake Weissman's of the world. I'm telling you, you got to chill with this whole fucking like Owen's problematic. It it will not go well for you. Well, and you it's not. You, I'm, it's also that. And, and by the way, I, I, how much time do you have? Cause I, I really want to talk a little bit about the, uh, the Golden Globes and Me Too. Cause I, yeah, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it for that bonus section. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Well, I want to do a little bit for it. On um, the regular section. <laughs> oh, great. Yeah, yeah. Let's do it. Talk. I, we have to. Oh, I, I'm, I'm in it. I'm in it, man. I'm in it. About it. Uh, but, but real quick, and then I'll, then we'll do the, we'll, we'll get to the Golden Globes. But the, the thing that drives me nuts too is that they're, they're putting these stakes in the ground and they're making these huge cultural issues out of things. And like, look, I'm all for transgender rights. I would never want them to be denied any right, of course. But you're talking about 0.0001% of the population. And it's become something that they're, they're making into, a cultural war and it's just yeah. it boggles my mind that but it makes sense is- though it, it's expected it's all math it's like when you're in an outrage ponzi scheme when all of your um policies are pushed not by logic not by you know economics or what's good for us when it's when it's pushed by emotion you have to latch on to a group that you convince the, the 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 toxic femininity quality in people that what like that's good with kids like there's a snake near my baby like mm-hmm. whatever like literally anything to keep my baby safe right you get you make a new baby so, you know gay black you run out they uh, unfortunately for the left they have all their rights so it's like now what do you got yeah trans yeah. it's like you're literally just reaching at this point and and so they're running out of rope and at the same time they're running out of accusations because there are actual racists in the in the country and when you call me a racist for my view on free market health care <laughs> what do you call an actual racist when you call aziz ansari a rapist what's a real rapist called yeah. and it's like once you once you break down the effect the efficiency of language to 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 speak to someone and say like what something is in the world that there is good there is evil we're we're sitting ducks, yep. and I think that it really is a massive uh, game theory, blue team, red team uh, acquisition of resources by a small group of people profiting. Same with a lot of these wars. You know, it's 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 not America that's even getting the shit from the Middle East. It's uh, the military itself is getting these giant uh, budgets, and a very small amount of people are profiting from all of our work and all of our taxes. And so when these people sell us on this bullshit, like Bernie Sanders, fucking healthcare, his proposition would have was was like triple the military budget. Oh yeah, there's no way. Well, California, did, like they debated doing a national or a, a state healthcare, and it would have bankrupted us overnight. There was no way. To, it was the same thing. It would have been triple the budget. There's no possible I, way to do it. It doesn't make any logical sense or economic sense. By the way, a state that's already bankrupted. Oh yeah. It's, it's, it, it, and, yeah. And, and has the most illegal immigrants in it, the biggest welfare state. And oh yeah, let's make, let's nationalize our healthcare. Let's social. Why no, why no so rape straight. culture? Why no rape culture in LA? It's illegal. A lot of illegal immigrants. I had a friend that was gang raped, went to the cop, fucking covered in bruises, yeah. Did did the uh you know kidnapped in a van? Good oh, times. Yeah. Oh dude, there's uh, that shit's going on in like I just my my uh, wife just told me a story about a like this friend group she's in on Facebook and somebody had chicks following her around asking her in Target. And they're like hopped into a van. She told security they ran out and hopped into a van. And this shit's going all over there. That's like sex trade, sex workers. This is how they. Like- oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The the religion of tolerance is uh, and the religion of peace is a lot of times they, their view of women is not uh, great. And so when you go to the police, they don't even fucking do anything. Because a lot of times they don't politically want more stats that their precious illegals are 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 oh, gang raping women and covering them 
in, in fucking blood and cum. Yeah. And when you do and when you do the rape kit and you know where they live, they're still not prosecuted in Los Angeles. And it's like, get me the fuck out of here. And this was a girl that that my wife was with that night who was also drugged. And my wife ended up on the street. So it's like we dodged a fucking bullet. And and again, Jake Weissman, you can think I'm problematic, but that's because you don't have a fucking family or you don't give a shit about the future of the country. You just want to get Comedy Central to give you money and for you to get your dick sucked every now and then and for you to fucking have some LGBT get, uh, group give you an award because you have a fucking lesbian sister. It's bullshit, man. And there's real victims right now. And one of the biggest problems with illegal immigrants is you can't prosecute them. They're illegal. Like they don't have social security numbers. They, they fucking disappear. It's like, so you don't want these people and it's not racism. It's like have a fucking um, uh, vet them, vet these people. And the, and the Muslim ban, quote unquote, great ban. It's like unvetted, war-torn people with PTSD. I don't give a shit oh, yeah. if they're Welcome black, the, white. Yeah, welcoming refugees. Yeah, I, I agree. It's, I, I don't understand. Like, I was in full support of, like, okay, if you want to vet them further, vet them further. Like, I, didn't, I, I wasn't for a, quote-unquote, ban from certain states, but I don't, I don't completely disagree with taking in mass groups of refugees just to take them in. And especially— No! It's like, it's Dude, America. the only town to take in Jews was Oswego, New York. It was 900 during the Holocaust. Yeah. These people do not. And that was during FD motherfucking R. These people, these quote unquote progressives do not give a shit about people. And it's like when you see Hillary Clinton saying we came, we saw he's dead about uh, oh, a yeah, guy that was sodomized to death. Yeah. Yeah. A guy that was one of uh, uh, America's allies and was actually keeping uh, a lot of hordes of fucking Muslims from from. Entering oh, dude, the same, illegally. Same Saddam Hussein. Saddam Hussein was a piece of shit, but you know what? He was a piece of shit that knew how to fucking keep terrorists in check. It was a hard yeah. way to do it, but he kept them in check. And once we get him out of the way, oh, look, now we got all sorts of fucking problems. All yeah, it's kind of like that problems. stripper. It's like the stripper that has a crack problem. And, and if as soon as she's not with that guy who's controlling, maybe a little abusive, she like dies. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, one example like, that was owen benjamin yeah. who said that uh, everybody was, <laughs> right what, what can they take from me my friend nothing your goddamn chickens <laughs> i got the chickens and i do and, and my uh, my youtube went from 2000 to 72,000. my twitter is over a hundred thousand now it's it's really backfiring i think on the people trying to shame me it only made me like more fucking you're listen like obi-wan to kenobi baby no if you're not lying people sense it and they love it you know. It's it's really crazy. Well, let's talk about one more thing because uh, I know where I'm I'm going over because we've been talking for a while. Shit just fly. Time flies, man. But because uh, I want to talk real quick about this, and then I want to do a quick bonus segment for our Pride members uh, without taking too much of your time. Because I know you got, you're a much later time done than me. But you had said something that I completely agreed with. I did a whole episode of my podcast about it. I don't think you probably you probably didn't hear it, but I did a whole episode basically talking about the Me Too movement, and it was based around what you had said. And it was in regards to Reese Witherspoon specifically. And that was Reese Witherspoon went out there and jumped on the whole Me Too train and said, oh, you know, I've dealt with this and I had this experience too. And you called her out as well as all these other women in the entertainment industry. And you said, who? who yeah, say the name. Name the fucking names. Because you and you and you dead on nailed it. You are an accomplice. If you know this is going on, you went along with it. Because you know what? You can't name that name because I'm sure if we go to fucking IMDb, five-year movies that just came out came from whoever did that. Yeah, yeah. They're they're profiting from it. They're slave traders, basically. It's like like uh, Meryl Streep who said Harvey Weinstein is God in front of a bunch of women that will then get raped by him because they trust him. That's the same problem I have with uh, yeah, Aziz endorsed. Ansari. It's, it, yeah, it's an endorsement. It's vouching. You're vouching for these people. Yeah. And it's like... It, it, it's straight out of Genesis, man. It's like it's like uh, if, once you give something a name, you bring it into existence. And that's why I got excommunicated and uh, why Jake finds, finds me problematic is because I said that guy's doing that to his kid, him. And that's powerful. And, dude, people rally behind that shit where they go, oh, this guy's willing to plant a fucking flag. Yeah. I go, that guy is abusing his kid. Not we have to stop child abuse. We have to stop gravity's effect on people's faces. We have to stop mean people with yeah. guns. How? How? Who? And all these people, all these people are like, Donald Trump is the, the worst. What did he do? What policy do you want changed? 
What do you oh, think yeah. candidate you would have done differently? I was talking like, hey, what, like, how has your life been been in, impacted by Donald Trump? Unless you're an illegal alien who is who is deported. And by the way, Donald Trump's deported less people than Obama at this point in his in his uh, presidential campaign. Of course, of course. And, and it's like, how are you impacted? And the mass majority of the country is going to do better. And then you see all these people like this, and you know, the Golden Globes all reeling against Trump. Robert De Niro reeling really against Trump, and this whole like. And that's what I want to talk about. Just, just the a bunch of like this, this, this whole we're going, we're going to all wear black, and we're going to rage against Donald Trump. We're going to rage against the male patriarchy and take advantage of power players. But they're all fucking hypocrites. Why? Why no does other fucking electrical men? There's spotlights up in the Raptors. Those okay. are a bunch of dudes. Men make those fucking seats. Men cater their events. Men do security. The cops that these fuckers wear pig socks are the ones outside making sure that no one comes in and rapes Gwyneth Paltrow. Yeah. It's like, here's something that'll blow your mind. Want to know who wasn't at the Golden Globes? All the whistleblowers. Rose McGowan. Not invited. No, not invited. Because they're trying to set, they're trying to set an example. If you speak out, you're out. And it's like, but then what they do is they go on parade. They say, oh, look at us fighting what we are. It's disgusting. It's literally satanic. And it's like, then you got Jake Weissman, who knows all of it. And he wants to criticize me, a great man. He is a pussy. Please let him listen to this. I'm dying to know his response. He won't, though. These people never respond. He blocked me on Twitter like a bitch. What kind of comic blocks another comic? It's like I even on another account said, hey, man, I heard you just talk shit about me. What did you say exactly? Fucking block that account. It's like these people aren't. And his new show is called like Corporate on Comedy Central or some shit. It's made by a corporation. It's like people aren't this stupid. We, that that little bitch has to leave Los Angeles, stop eating fucking avocados and sucking up these rapist farts and just see that people can see through this shit. He's not. Th- these lies are bullshit and trust your instincts. And yeah, he drew first blood, but I am much, much more vicious than he is. <laughs> if you come at me, if you poke me, I will fucking poke back and I'm my fingers are way bigger. So like. Please, Jake, let me know what you think, because I'm sure what you you have thousands of people listen to this. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. Thousands of people listen to this. Thousands of really smart people, usually libertarians. Uh, IQs are pretty high. I'm sure a lot of them are in, you know, influential places. They're they're good people. And, and, and they're going to know that you didn't say shit back to me. Nothing. And it's like, I don't even know who the fuck you are, man. So it's like, that's my response to Jake Weissman. Uh-huh. It's like, yeah, kids are not trans. Understandable, understandable. I know we went over. And again, Jake's a friend of mine. Jake, uh, if you realize this, I still like you. <laughs> but you know, what, I what do you it, like about I, him? Like, what's the like? What's the likable again, quality? I know where you're coming from. I know where you're coming from. Like, what's a likable quality about Jake? I've never talked to him in my life. He just he just drew some blood on me. So I know, I know he did. No, he's he is legitimately. And again, if if you guys, I think if it had a different interaction face to face and his soul. You know, I, it would be a different world. And like I said, I think that he was pretty polite in the way that he, he phrased his comments. Well, that he defended he, the child abuse. He didn't agree like, with you. Well, he, he's not, he didn't defend. He has a lesbian, he has a lesbian sister. So he didn't little defend kids. it. He just said he didn't agree with what you said. Um, so that's, that's his well, opinion. Is- that's his opinion. I don't agree with it. Clearly, you don't agree with it either. But, you know, I don't, I'm not going to say that he should be, uh, that he's a bitch or a pussy or when he was thrown under the bus. If you and him sat down, I guarantee you'd have a very nice conversation because he's a very intelligent guy and, he, and honestly, a very nice guy. Well, that's and, probably uh, and, what, and what very, drives me the craziest. And he's very, to be talented. honest with you, man, guy. he's a funny that's guy. What, that's what makes me the most angry is because he's definitely really intelligent. And I think that's why I'm taking it kind of personally because I think like, as a smart comedian that you're vouching for, you're clearly a good guy. It's like, I can tell that you're not bending at all to what I'm saying, which is cool. Jake, you got a good buddy with this guy. But like, <laughs> but like, I don't get how that's good, how someone can slander someone. I lost my touring schedule with a baby well, because I said, time out, time out. Cause they, I would, again, he didn't say any. We're, the context of the conversation is that, you know, we were talking about, I brought you up. And it was in the context of, uh, this is, this is the, a uh, hazard to this cultural war on free speech, which I think is bullshit. Now, his yeah. counterpoint was that, well, it's the marketplace of ideas. And you said yourself, like, you've, you've actually done pretty well, uh, turning that. Now, you shouldn't have had to do that. 
But right, know, but did, didn't he say that? Didn't he say that I'm profiting from it? He Isn't said, that no, a no, point he, he made? Said, his context wasn't – it wasn't specifically uh, attacking you as profiting, but he was saying in general like the marketplace is like, okay, so people can, make a, people can make a career out of saying, okay, well, look, I'm being persecuted, which is true. Um, you know, people, people have that ability to say, okay, you can use that, which you, which you did to your credit. Uh, uh, no, though, to. that was not branding. That wasn't no, intentional. No, no I, know. I was getting exactly. fucking ripped apart. That's like saying, uh, because the Jews were forced into money lending because they weren't allowed real jobs in the middle ages. I agree with you. I agree with you, but it's yeah, just so in the it's, broader it's, context of the conversation about, he's trying to basically appeal to free market, uh, pay respect to the free market of ideas in a way. Is it? I mean, it, the conversation is interesting because, like I said, there was like a dissonance into stuff that he agreed with, but you could tell he was having difficulty trying to push it into his liberal worldview. So, you know, again, I, I think that his comments were clearly he doesn't agree with you, but I wouldn't say that he out, outwardly attacked you. And I think if there was a, an opportunity ever to sit down, you guys could have a perfectly fine conversation. You know? Yeah, I, I doubt good, it. I, I think life's pretty short, man. And it's like, these guys are driving, it's like they're driving something pretty nefarious. And I just, I'm not on board. Like 2014, yeah. 2018, the, the lines are, are, are starting to be drawn. And it's like when people are pushing the concept that gender doesn't exist and little kids are part of this nonsense, that's, I don't think people realize how crazy that is because they're in this soup. And it's like, I, I just don't think that they have any context into thinking like of how nuts that is. We're still talking about slavery, uh, you know, 160 years later and how that's why people are, can't play football. They're on their knees or some shit. It's like that to me is worse than slavery, like like uh, chemically castrating a child because of uh, his behavior at two. And I take that so fucking personally. No, I can tell, man. It's it it's obvious. You care a lot about it. And like I said, as a father, uh you you do have a different perspective on it than he does. Uh and right. that's clear. And and, yeah, that I, and even though I, I agree with you, I have you know, I can't understand the perspective either. Maybe in a couple of years I will, but there's no way for me to, good, to look at it from that standpoint yet. And, and same thing for Jake. But do you want kids do you, do you want kids one day? I do. Yeah. Yeah. Probably. Sometime. Imagine if you could, imagine if you couldn't have kids because of the way you acted when you were two. I agree, man. I'm totally it's agree. nuts. Yeah. And, yeah it's, it's and, and, and you're probably not even cognizant of that because you're too young to even really remember it. Of course. At two, I, I, th- I, you know, at five, I thought I was a dog. Like I thought I would, I would well, lick water like, out of, exactly. out of a bowl. That's, that's like what I said earlier. You know, it's like, I don't think anybody has the wherewithal to decide what gender they are when they still think they could grow up to be fucking Batman or a Tyrannosaurus. Yeah, totally. Uh, well, no, but you're a great guy, so I won't keep talking shit about your buddy. But um, <laughs> I just think he's a he's a he's a weirdo. I did, maybe he's a nice guy, but he's definitely a creep. I wouldn't let him around my kids. Oh, st- uh, no, don't say that. That's not. Oh, well, I just did. I mean, what's he gonna do about that? <laughs> I'm just trying to get him to write back, but he won't. And I just uh, think that, that silence is fucking weird. I'm no what I'm saying. I believe. I'm not lying, but I, I just. Know, I know, man. I know. Well, hey, let's, no, throw, let's, let's throw a little blood in the water. Let's see what the sharks do. <laughs> the sharks always circle. Uh, and I, I know it's firsthand. The bears are always lurking in the woods. The, uh, yeah, they're good guys, though. The hashtag unbearables. Um, all right. So, by the way, let's wrap it here because I want to continue this a little bit for 10 quick minutes with you. And then I'll let you go. I promise. Uh, so Sounds- let me wrap this episode officially here. And the rest will go to our pride. So, guys, make sure to follow Owen. Be- Owen, which which Twitter should they follow you on? First off. Well, Owen Benjamin is my main one, but that'll probably be deleted because of people like Jake. So uh, go to Owen Benjamin. <laughs> B uh, Owen B E A R J A M I N because that's why people like Jake block people like me is because what they do is they they uh they uh uh what's it called when you tell Jack at Twitter that I have uh, I said naughty words that's oh, why we it. get banned and then they block me so that flag, I can't do it to them appropriate content or whatever right even though I would never dream of doing that to another person I've never flagged a tweet in my life. But I, I did learn that that's why these people block people. It, it's it's they come in, they they flag, they 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 uh, they tattle to Jack, and then they block you so you can't do it back to them. And they get their buddies to do it, and then I lose income, and my kid doesn't get as much uh, prosperity in life. So yeah, I'm not gonna have beers with this fucking guy. I know why he blocks people. So yeah, quit tattling to Jack, you bitch. Ha. <laughs> okay, he's a good guy to you. I'll stop disrespecting your friend. <laughs> Uh, oh, now, now you will. Oh, great. Sweet. Oh, we got a minute left. Oh, wonderful. 
No, but dude, you said 45, we're a buck 30 in. That means you're having fun. <laughs> I know, I know. It's okay. All right. So anyway, so that's, uh, so you can find him on Twitter. Also got podcast. Why didn't they laugh? Breaking down, uh, I guess comedic theory uh, in a way. And of course you could follow him, go to the website. Uh, was, God, I already, I just blanked on the name. Huge it's pianist, a, huge pianist. Doctor. Yeah. And, you, and youtube.com slash Owen Benjamin comedy. I do, uh, at least an hour every morning at 9 a.m. Uh, it's called the bear, the bear feed. It's a, it's a really good time. I play piano, take requests. We chat. It's a great bunch of bears. The unbearables are legitimately hilarious. All right, there you go, guys. And thank you from me, Brian McWilliams over here. I want to remind you, you can join our Facebook forum, have interactions about the podcast, talk all this stuff. That's go to Lions of Liberty on Facebook. It'll pop right up. If you're not too weird, we'll let you in. And of course, listen, give us reviews. Follow us on Twitter at Lions Liberty, et cetera. All right, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Owen, for coming and joining in the uh, the. Thanks for having me, buddy. Love to have you. And uh, guys, thank you for listening. From me, Brian McWilliams, the Lions of Liberty and Electric Liberty Land, always stay plugged in to Liberty. Jake's a bitch. Jake's a bitch. I'm cutting that out. Guess what, Lions? For as little as $5 a month, you can get access to exclusive bonus audio content and help this program grow by joining the Lions of Liberty Pride. To learn more, head over to lionsofliberty.com slash support.